and welcome to this week's documentary. Today's topic is happiness. How happy do you think you are on a scale of one to 10? One being not happy, 10 being very happy. A million. A million, and what makes you so happy? What makes me so happy is for what I do best, like building Legos, drawing pictures of dragons. And we're gonna answer the question, what really makes people happy? Let's start with some common myths about happiness. Myth number one is that people with disabilities or life-threatening illness are less happy than the average person. However, this is not true. What is the most important thing that people should know about you? And my answer was simply that I have a very happy life. So even though there are many obstacles in my life, with a lot of them being created by progeria, I don't want people to feel bad for me. I don't think about these obstacles all the time, and I'm able to overcome most of them anyway. People who are paraplegic or disabled might be devastated at first, but they will gradually start to spend more time thinking about other things, and they adapt over time. A major disability often leaves a person somewhat happier than the average person because they experience more gratitude for life. Myth number two is that money buys happiness. Let's take state lottery winners, for example. Once the initial excitement wears off, they typically find their overall happiness unchanged. In the long run, increased wealth hardly influences happiness. In fact, American average buying power has almost tripled since the 1950s, while reported happiness has remained almost unchanged. Once your basic needs are met, including food and shelter, what matters most is how you feel about what you have. Those who live with a sense of gratitude enjoy greater happiness. For both myths, the adaption level phenomenon comes into play. It's our tendency to adjust to a new situation until it becomes normal. Other common myths include age, gender, educational level, parenting, meaning whether you have children or not, physic and physical attractiveness. All of these factors have no correlation with a person's happiness. Now that we know what doesn't cause happiness, let's take a look at a few people who said what does make them happy. Oh gosh, a lot of things. Um, being involved in my church, uh, being with my friends and family, um, hanging out with my boyfriend. What makes me happy is all the beautiful things in the world, whether it be music, or my friends, or my family, or my dog. What makes me happy is knowing that like my family is like healthy and happy. So what really does make people happy? We're going to go over seven different factors of happiness. The number one factor is relationships. Having close relationships with people makes you happier and live longer. According to a 2011 study, spending time with your friends can boost your mood, help decrease your stress, and increase your sense of belonging. It's human nature to want to belong, because from an evolutionary standpoint, it's what helped keep us alive. It's much easier to live if you're not the only one providing for yourself. According to Karen Hall, PhD, friends can also be a gateway to feeling a part of something bigger. A sense of belonging to a greater community improves your motivation, health, and happiness, she wrote in a Psychology Today blog. Research has shown that strong social support systems have positive effect when battling a disease, cut your risk for dementia, and also alleviate depression. You know the old saying that laughter is the best medicine? Well, turns out it's true. <laughs> laughter boosts the immune system, triggers the release of endorphins, and increases blood flow, which can help prevent you from a heart attack. Because laughter is 30 times more likely in social situations than in solitary situations, your friends help contribute to the amount of time that you spend laughing. The second factor is altruism which is helping others without considering the cost to oneself. People who volunteer or care for others on a consistent basis tend to have better psychological well-being, including fewer depressive symptoms and higher life satisfaction. This plays into the feel-good, do-good phenomenon, but in fact, the opposite also proves to be true. The more you do good, the more you feel good. There's a higher correlation of life satisfaction and volunteering with older adults than there are with younger adults because older adults tend to be more intrinsically motivated, whereas younger adults tend to have more extrinsic reasons for volunteering, such as for a grade or for college acceptance. One study conducted by United Healthcare 
found that among people who spent a few hours per week doing face-to-face -face volunteer work, 96% said that they felt happier and 73% said that they felt less stressed. Now here's a clip from the Force Club, which is a community service club at Granite Bay High School, where they are being interviewed about why they choose to volunteer. Last year, a little before last year, I volunteered just because like, I wanted to give hours and stuff, but then I went to an ATLU event, and I met this little girl named Taylor and her twin brother Ricky, and I got to hang out with them, and throughout that night it was just so awesome getting to hear about them and their life, and then ever since then they made an impact on my life. I choose to volunteer because I like love working with kids and helping others is what I feel I was meant to do and it just makes me happy. The third factor is exercise, diet, and sleep. Aerobic exercise not only promotes health and energy, but it also reduces mild depression and anxiety. Exercise releases endorphins and increases the production of dopamine, which is responsible for feelings of pleasure and happiness. It also boosts your confidence and helps improve sleeping problems of insomniacs and people with sleeping disorders. The fourth factor is flow. Have you ever heard the saying that I'm in the zone? Well, the zone is flow, which can be different things for different people. In order for flow to occur, you must see the activity as voluntary, intrinsically motivating, challenging without being overwhelming, and have clear goals towards success. According to one of the founders of Positive Psychology, a growing body of scientific evidence indicates that flow is highly correlated with happiness. Furthermore, it has been found that people who experience a lot of flow in their daily lives also develop other positive traits, such as high concentration, high self-esteem, and even greater health. So find something that you are passionate about and that makes you feel purposeful and go out and do it. The fifth factor is spiritual engagement. Spirituality is often related to meditative acts, which has a strong link to well-being because it calms the body and reduces stress and anxiety of everyday life. People involved with a spiritual engagement are provided with a deeper sense of meaning, and by believing in something that's greater than themselves, they tend to stay more positive in times of sadness or adversity. Religious beliefs help people react to stressors more calmly and find healthy coping mechanisms. And church can be a great way to make friends, which falls under the category of relationships. The sixth factor is strengths and virtues. Positive psychologists such as Martin Slingman agree that the happiest people are those who discover their strengths and use them for a purpose that is greater than themselves. Research indicates that people are most likely to value a job or relationship when they regularly utilize their strengths. For example, Spider-Man has a variety of strengths that he uses to keep the people safe, and the safety of the city is much bigger than himself. The more hours per day that adults believe that they are using their strengths, the more likely they are to report having energy, feeling rested, and being overall happy. The seventh and final factor is positive thinking, which includes optimism and gratitude. Optimistic explanatory style is when people view problems as changeable and have an internal locus of control. Optimists live longer. Optimism serves as a protective factor against depression and coronary heart disease. And it also plays a role in the recovery from illness. Studies have found that optimistic people experience less distress when faced with a potentially life-threatening cancer diagnosis. Simply expecting a positive outcome can boost a person's immune system and help them cope with troubling news. With positive emotions, people tend to feel more gratitude and grateful people are happier, receive more social support, and are less stressed and less depressed. Psychologists have scientifically proven that one of the greatest contributing factors to overall happiness in your life is how much gratitude you show. We gathered a selection of volunteers to act as our subjects. First, we gave them a test, but it gave us a pretty good idea of their current level of happiness. We asked them to close their eyes and think of somebody who was really influential in their lives. We had them write down as much as they could about why this person was so important and tried to get them to call that person and read what they wrote about them. Now for those who actually picked up the phone and personally expressed their gratitude, we saw increases between four and 19%. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Hopefully you can apply some of these factors to yourself and improve the quality of your life with a little bit of happiness.